Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Solving a quadratic equation using factoring is a skill you can use to solve a lot of geometry problems, so we're going to be practicing that here. A couple of key ideas are to remember to always draw a picture and uh, to think about in geometry you can't have side lengths that are negative. There are some side lengths that don't make sense. We'd say they're outside the domain, so we'll talk about that once we get our solutions. Okay, here we go. The length of a closet is 28 feet shorter than 3 times the width. Find the closet dimensions. Okay, well, it didn't say it's a rectangle, but since it uses the words length and width, I'm going to assume it's a rectangle. Okay, the length is 28 feet shorter than 3 times the width. Well, if this is the width, this would be 28 feet shorter than something, so I'm going to do something minus 28. And the thing that I'm subtracting 28 from is 3 times the width. So again, the length of the closet is 28 feet shorter, so there's the minus 28, than 3 times the width. That's how I set this guy up. Find the closet dimensions. Well, the thing they forgot to tell us that I forgot to tell you here is that um, the area is equal to 20. That's the part we're going to be using to solve for the dimensions. So let's try it. We know the area of a rectangle is length times width. So length is 3w minus 28th. It's going to be multiplied by the width, and the result should give us the answer 20. Let's go ahead and distribute on the left-hand side, and then set it equal to 0 by subtracting 20. Okay, now these numbers are kind of big, so I'm wondering if there's a greatest common factor, but there isn't. That's kind of a bummer. So you're just going to have to go ahead and factor using whatever technique you like to use. I'm going to use guess and check. I know the first terms have to be 3w and w, because those are the only numbers that multiply to 3. Now for the last ones, they have to multiply to negative 20, so it could be 4 and 5. I'm going to go with 2 and 10, um, and since I already did this problem, I know this is going to work, but uh, you guys are going to want to either if you're doing guess and check, plan on doing some erasing, or if you're using one of the other methods, like the area or the box and rectangle, you should be able to arrive at this factored form. Okay, now that it's factored, using the zero product property, I'm going to set each parenthesis equal to zero to get my answers for w. w could be equal to negative two-thirds or positive ten, and this is where we talk about the context of the problem, like the real problem. Um, the width of a closet could not be negative two-thirds feet. That doesn't make any sense. Like, my algebra is all correct. I didn't make any mistakes. It's just that that answer doesn't make sense in the context of this problem. What does make sense is that the width of this closet be 10 feet. If I know the width is 10 and I know that the area is 20, that tells me the length must be, let's see, 10 times what gives me 20? That'd be 2 feet. So my picture wasn't drawn to scale. See how I act like this was 10 and that's 2? That's kind of weird. Like, I'm um, in my equations, the, the two should be the small side, but that's okay. Like, I didn't know that going into the problem. I just sketched a picture. Now I know a correct, um, a correctly, I would probably have the w on the long side and the 3w minus 28 on the vertical side. But I did find a length and width that multiplies to 20, and that also meets the requirement that the length is equal to 28 feet shorter than 3 times the width. That's how I know I did my problem correctly. Okay, now the next one is a right triangle. I know it's a right triangle because it has that right triangle marking, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. You guys might also know it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's fine, as long as you remember that a and b are the sides that touch the right angle, and then c is the hypotenuse. Okay, so for a squared, I'm going to put parentheses around it. That's a really common student mistake to forget those parentheses, and we'll talk about it in a second. What I'm going to have to do is square each one of those binomials, get it all equal to zero, and then refactor. Now, a lot of students, when they do a squared, they'll say it's four, or they'll say it's two x squared. It's actually not, because the two is squared and the x is squared. This should be four x squared. If you foil out the next piece, I'm going to have you guys try that on your own. You should get this. On the right-hand side, if you foil it out, you should get this, 12x plus 4. Okay, so now everything's expanded. In order to solve for a polynomial, I need to have it in standard form, meaning equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract everything over to the right. I'll let you guys finish that on your or try, try that on your own. You get 4x squared minus 16x. Then I'm ready to factor. The greatest common factor here is 4x. And then using the zero product property, I set each factor equal to zero to solve for x. So either my side length for x is zero or the side length is four. 
Now, zero doesn't make sense, right? Like, I can't have the side length of my triangle be zero. So that can't be an answer. It's got to be four. X in this problem is four. The side of the triangle is four. And it didn't ask me to go back and find the dimensions, but I sure could. That would be two times four. This would be four plus two, and that would be 12 minus two is 10. So I sure could go back and label the dimensions of that triangle. The key idea was setting it up properly using the Pythagorean theorem. So geometry and algebra are so intertwined, it's too bad that we often make them separate courses. These are examples of geometry problems that you can't solve without factoring techniques from algebra. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah.